Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks here in sunny San Jose, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, James Kobielis. We're joined by John Kreisa. He is the VP of Marketing here at Hortonworks. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. We've enjoyed watching you on the main stage. It's been a <laughs> lot you. of fun. It's been great. It's been great general sessions, some great talks, um, talking about the technology, heard from some customers, some third parties, and, uh, and the most recently from Kevin Slavin from The Shed, which is really amazing. <laughs> so I, I really want to actually get into this event. Sure. So this, we have 2,100 attendees mm -hmm. from 23 different countries, right. uh, thir uh, 32 different industries. Yep. This started as a small, That's right. small, what tiny little thing. Year? Wasn't it like Yahoo started in 2008? It did, yeah, as a meetup. You changed name a few years ago, yeah. but it's still the same event, lo looming larger and mm -hmm. larger, and yeah. it's international. Yeah. It's, been, it's been great, it's gone international. As you said, it's actually the 17th total event that we've done, yeah, yeah. if you count the ones in Europe and in Asia. So, yeah, really, it's gone global. I mean, it's a global community, right, around data, so no surprise. Um, but the growth has been phenomenal, the energy is great, um, the innovations that the, that the, t the community is talking about and the ecosystem's talking about here is, you know, is really great. So it just continues to evolve as an event and continues to bring new ideas and share those ideas. What are you hearing from customers? Mm -hmm. What are they buzzing about? I mean, yeah. every morning on the main stage you do different uh, yeah. polls and That's say, right. how much are you using machine learning? Yeah. What, what, what portion of your data are you moving to the cloud? Yeah. What are you learning? So, you know, the, and it's interesting because we did the similar polls in our show in Berlin and the results are very similar. We did the, the cloud poll and there's a lot of buzz around cloud. What we're hearing is a lot of companies you know, are thinking about or somewhere along their cloud journey, um, but it's just exactly what their overall plans are. And it's, you know, there's a lot of news about, you know, maybe cloud will eat everything. And if you look at the poll results, in fact, something like 75% of the, the attendees here said they have cloud in their plans, but, but only about 12% said they were going to move everything to the cloud. So a lot of hybrid cloud. And it's how to figure out which workloads to run where, um, how do they think about that strategy in terms of where to deploy the data, where to deploy the workloads, and what that should look like. And, and, and that's one of the main things that we're hearing and, and talking a lot about. In fact, we've been seeing that Wikibon in our research, our recent update to the big data market forecast showed that public cloud will dominate increasingly in the coming decade, but Hybrid cloud will be a long transition period for mm -hmm. many, most enterprises mm -hmm. who are still firmly rooted in on-premises deployment right. of Hadoop and so forth and so on. Clearly, the bulk of your customers, the bulk of your customer deployments are on-premise. They are. So you're working from a good starting point, mm -hmm. which means you've got, what, 1,400 customers? That's right, thereabouts. Predominantly on-premises, but many of them here at the show want to make an invest, want to sustain their investment mm -hmm. in a vendor that provides them with that flexibility That's right. as they go, maybe they decide they want to use Google or Microsoft or AWS mm -hmm. or IBM for particular workloads that their existing investment in Hortonworks doesn't prevent them from, in fact, it facilitates, facilitates them moving that data in those workloads. That's so, right, yeah. and in fact, we want to help them do that, I and mean, a lot of the vendor, a lot of our customers have, I'll call it a multi-cloud strategy, so they want to be able to work with an Amazon or a Google or you know, any of the other vendors in the space um, sort of equally well and have the ability to move workloads around, and that's one of the things that we can help them from. One of the things you also did yesterday on the main stage was, was you talked about this conference in the greater context of the world and mm -hmm. what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. This is happening against the backdrop of the World Cup. Yes. And, and you said that, 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 that this is actually really emblematic mm -hmm. of data because this is a game, a, a tournament that generates tons of data. Tremendous amount of data. It's showing how it, data can launch new business models, mm -hmm. disrupt old ones. That's right. where, where do you think we're at right now? For mm -hmm. some, as someone who's been in this industry for a long time, yep. just lay the scene. Yeah, 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 I think we're still very much at the beginning. You know, even though the conference has been around for a while, the technology has been, it's emerging so fast and just evolving so fast that we're still at the beginning of all of the transformations. I've been listening to the customer presentations here and all of them are, they're at some point along the journey, many are really still starting. And if, even in some of the polls that we uh, had today talked about the fact that they're very much at the beginning of their journey with things like streaming or you know, some of the AI and machine learning technologies. They're, they're at various stages, so I believe we're still really at the beginning of, of the transformation that we'll see. And that reminds me of another detail of, of your product portfolio, or your architecture and your robot. Um, streaming and edge deployments 
are also in the future for many of your customers mm -hmm. who still primarily do analytics on data at rest That's and right. so forth. Um, you made an investment in a number of technologies, NiFi mm -hmm. for streaming. There's something called MiniFi mm -hmm. that has been discussed here at the show mm -hmm. as an enabler for streaming all the way out to edge devices. Mm -hmm. What I'm getting is that that's indicative of, you know, Erwin Murthy, one of your co-founders, mm -hmm. has made a, uh, you know, uh, it was a very great discussion for us analysts and mm -hmm. also here at the yeah. show. That is one of many uh, investments you're making mm -hmm. to prepare for a future that will be, a set of workloads that will become more predominant mm -hmm. in, in the coming decade. But one of the new things I heard this week that I had not heard in terms of emphasis from you guys is more of an emphasis on data warehousing as mm -hmm. an as mm -hmm. an important use case yeah. for the for HDP in your mm -hmm. portfolio, yeah. specifically with Hive, mm -hmm. of the Hive 3.0 now in HDP 3.0, yeah. oh, in HDP 3.0. Oh, yes. Um, with the, uh, the uh, enhancements to Hive to support more real time and low latency, mm -hmm. but also there's ACID com uh, capabilities yeah. there. I'm hearing something from, the, in this way, I'm, what you guys are doing is consistent with one of your competitors, Cloudera. Mm -hmm. They're going deeper into data warehousing too because they recognize they got to go there like you do mm -hmm. to be able to absorb more of your customers' workloads. Mm -hmm. I think that's important that you guys are making that investment. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're not just big data, you're all data and all data applications, potentially, if your customers want to go there and engage you. So yes. I think that was a significant, Subtle emphasis, and yes. I, as me as an analyst is noticing. Thank you. Week, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there were so many enhancements in 3.0 that yeah. were brought from the community that it was hard to sort of talk about everything in depth, but you're right, the, the enhancements to Hive in terms of performance really have enabled it to take on a greater set of workloads and interactivity mm -hmm. um, that we know that our customers <laughs> want. You know, the, the advantage being that you have that as a common data layer in the in the back end, and you can run all those different workloads. So it might be data warehousing, high-speed query workloads, but you can do the same on on that same data with Spark and you know data science-related workloads. Again, it's that common pool back end of data, the data lake, and having that kind of ability to do it with common security and governance. It's one of the one of the benefits our customers are telling us they really appreciate. One of the things we've also heard this morning was talking about data analytics in terms of brand value mm -hmm. and brand protection, yes. importantly. FedEx, um, what <laughs> FedEx yeah. exactly, talking yeah. about, the, the speaker said, we've all seen these apology commercials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think, is, is, it, is it damage control? I mean, what, what is, what is the, the customer motivation mm -hmm. here? Yeah, uh, well, you know, a company can have billions of dollars of market cap wiped out by breaches and security, and we've seen it, right? It's not, this is not uh, theoretical. These are actual occurrences that we've seen. And so, really, it's a, they're trying to protect the brand and the business um, and continue to be viable, because can, they can get knocked back so far that it can take years to recover from, from the impact. And it's, it's really, they're looking at the security aspects of it, the governance of their data, the regulations, of course, GDPR, you mentioned earlier, it's, you know, the, these things are, um, you know, ha have real financial impact on the businesses, and I think it's, it's brand and the actual you know, operations and finances of the business that can be impacted negatively. And when you're thinking about Hortonworks' marketing messages going mm -hmm. forward, how do you want to be described now, and mm -hmm. then how do you think, how do, how do you want customers to think of you even five or 10 years from sure. now? Sure, I mean, I want them to think of us as a, as a partner to help them with their data journey on all aspects of their data journey where they're collecting data from, from the edge, you mentioned Minify and NiFi and things like that, bringing that data back, processing it in motion, as well as processing it in rest, regardless of where that data lands, on-premise, in, uh, in the cloud, somewhere in between, a hybrid strategy, multi-cloud strategy. We really want to be thought of as their partner in their data journey, and that's, that's really what we're doing. And then even going forward, I mean, what's the, one of the things you were talking about earlier is the companies that are sort of saying, we actually want to be boring. We want to help you do mm -hmm. all, the, all the stuff. There's a lot of money in boring. There's well, a lot no. of money, in, right. <laughs> and less risk, actually. <laughs> exactly. I mean, just go, even you, as you said, a partner in their data journey, mm -hmm. but is it we want to do every, we will do anything and everything, mm -hmm. or is it, well, no, do no, no, you no. going to yeah. do niche stuff? I mean. That's a good question. So no, and not, not everything. I think we, you know, we are focused on the, you know, the, the data layer, right? The movement of data, the, the processing, the storage, and, and truly the analytic applications that can be built on top of the platform. But right now we have stuck to our strategy. It's been very consistent since the beginning of the company in terms of taking these open source technologies, making an enterprise viable, 
developing an ecosystem around it and fostering a community around it. And that's been our strategy since, since before the company even started. And so we want to continue to do that and we will continue to do that. I think um, you know, we, the, you know, there's so much innovation that's happening in the community that, that we kind of quickly bring that into the products and make sure it's available in a kind of trusted, enterprise tested platform. And that's really one of the things we see our customers want to work with us. Over and over again they say, they select us because we bring innovation to them you know, quickly and in a safe and a consumable way. Uh, you know, um, before we came on camera here with you, I was telling uh, uh, Rebecca is that you know, Hortonworks has done a sensational job of continuing to align your product roadmaps with those of your leading partners, IBM, mm -hmm. AWS, Microsoft. You know, in many ways, your primary partners are not them, but the entire open source community, like 26 open source projects in mm -hmm. which Hortworks represents in your, it incorporated in your product portfolio mm -hmm. in which you are a primary player and committer. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, you're a primary ingester of innovation from all the communities in which you operate. We do. And you, that, that is your core business model. That's right, yeah. we, we both foster the innovation, we help drive, of course, yeah. some of the innovation ourselves with our engineers and architects, but, but you're absolutely right, Jim. I mean, it's, it's, it's the ability to get that innovation which is happening so fast in the community into the product and you know companies want and need to innovate. Things are moving so fast. I mean there's Moore's Law was mentioned multiple times on the main <laughs> stage, you know, and, and how it's impacting different parts of you know of the you know of the organization. It's not just the technology, but business models are evolving quickly, right? Uh, um, you know, we heard a little bit about Trimble, and if you've seen mm. you know, uh, Tim Leonard's talk that he gave around um, how, what they're doing in terms of logistics and the ability to go all the way out to the farmer and and, and impact you know what's happening at the farmer and and tracking things, you know, and down to the level of a tomato or an egg, all the way back, and just understand that. It's evolving business models, and mm. so it's it's not just the tech, but the evolution of business models. Rob talked about it yesterday, so you know I think those are some of the things that are kind of key. In fact, tracking. I'll just, I'll just stay on that point for just a quick industrial Internet of Things, which actually precision like you know, agriculture and everything mm -hmm. relates to, increasingly is relying on visual analysis, uh, automated visual analysis of parts and mm -hmm. eggs and whatever mm -hmm. it might be. And that is convolutional neural networks, that is AI, that is, has to be trained, mm -hmm. and it has to be trained increasingly in the cloud where the data lives. And the data lives in, uh, you know, in HDP and you know, uh, Hadoop clusters mm -hmm. and whatnot. So in many ways, no matter where the world goes in terms of industrial IoT, there will be massive Hadoop clusters, right. HDFS and object storage mm -hmm. driving it, but also embedded AI models that have to follow a specific DevOps life cycle, mm -hmm. and you guys have a strong orientation in your portfolio towards that degree of real-time streaming, as it were, of tasks, and that read from the, for the entire life cycle from preparing the data to modeling to training to deploying it out to Google or IBM or whoever else, mm -hmm. wherever else they want to go. Right. So I'm thinking that you guys are well positioned for that as well. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you finally, what, what is the takeaway? So mm -hmm. we're talking about the attendees, talking about the community yep. that you're cultivating here, yep. theme, ideas, innovation, insight. Mm -hmm. what, is, what do you hope an attendee leaves with? So I, I hope that the attendee leaves with you know, educated, right? Mm -hmm. And understanding the technology and the impacts that it can have so that they will you know, go back and change their business and can continue to drive their data projects. Like the, the whole intent is really, and we even changed the format of the conference, for more educational opportunities. So for me, I want, I want attendee to, you know, a, a satisfied attendee would be one that had learned about the things that they came here to learn um, so that they could go back and achieve the goals that they have when they get back, whether it's business transformation, technology transformation, you know, or something, some combination of the two. So to me, that's what I hope that everybody is taking away, and that they want to come back, you know, next year when we're in Washington D.C. and and uh, my stomping you know, ground. Can't right, wait. it's right. easy, easy exactly. trip for you. They'll probably send you out here. With yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, John, it's always, always, it's always fun talking to you. Thanks Thank so you much. very much. <laughs> Thank you. We will have more from the Cube's live coverage of DataWorks just after this. I'm Rebecca Knight for James Kobelius. <laughs>